So I've taste tested hundreds of whiskies this year and now I'm going to announce the best whiskies of 2022. So it's that time of year again, it's the time of year where everybody announces their favourite whiskey of the year. And I'm going to do the same. What I'm going to do first is announce my runners up to the whiskey of the year. And if you watch to the end of this video, I'm going to announce my whiskey of the year. So there are only two bottles of whiskey that I bought twice this year, and this runner up is one of them. And that is the Glen Goyne Car Strength. So this whiskey just hit the mark for me this year. I really, really enjoyed it. And it's obvious, right? I went through an entire bottle and now I'm halfway through this bottle. It's a distillery that I've probably been ignoring for too long. So for those who don't know, Glen Goyne is a distillery just north of Glasgow, part of the Highland region. And I think because a lot of their bottlings are released at around 43% and often quite expensive, I've kind of just sort of looked past Glen Goyne. But I do think it is one of those distilleries where they can release at 43% and whiskey geeks can still absolutely love them. That's what it is for me and what I've really realized this year. But this one's not just 43%, it's 59.2%. I've got batch eight, it's natural color, unchill filtered. So it's got everything I want. Also, it's not just like a sherry bomb and this is gonna kind of be a theme. I think someone asked in my Q&A video what my favorite style of whiskey is and it kind of has changed throughout my whiskey journey. It was smoky, then it was sherry, then it was like just ex-bourbon. Right now, I really like whiskeys that are from ex-bourbon American oak casks, but also blended with some ex-sherry casks, but not too much. It's not a sherry bomb. And that's exactly what this whiskey is. It has this really nice complexity and array of flavors. So let's jump in to the tasting notes. They're on that palate. There's this really nice sort of brown sugar, syrupiness, get some of those sherry notes. It's more on kind of the ripe fruit side rather than the dried fruit side. Then this nice kind of biscuity side from the ex bourbon cast, pepper notes, chocolatey notes, and some peanut notes. It's just a really nice complex whiskey. I would definitely say this is not a whiskey for beginners. It's a really punchy whiskey. And the Glen Scotia Victoriana was rated like the best Scotch whiskey of 2022 in the online Scotch Whiskey Awards. But to be honest, from a personal view, this is my favorite cast drink whiskey. I rate this over the Victoriana. So this year I was invited to be a contributor for the Online Scotch Whiskey Awards and one of the questions was what's the best value whiskey? And for me, this is the one I've submitted. The Glenlivet 12 licensed dram. So this is a follow up to last year's Origin series whiskies that Glenlivet are doing, which was the Illicit Still, which I absolutely love. The licensed dram is a little bit more of a cleaner version. This one's a little bit more rugged. I love both. So normally Glenlivet, I don't talk about them heaps, but I always do recommend them as a great starter whiskey, especially this one here, the Glenlivet 12. However, as you go down your whiskey journey, you stop sort of seeking these kind of lighter 40% kind of more basic tame whiskies. And luckily Glenlivet have answered the whiskey geek fans and basically given us everything we wanted. The illicit still was 48%. I was non-chill filtered, which it said on the label. For some reason, it doesn't say non-chill filtered on the licensed dram. I don't know why that is, but it is from first fill casks. It's bottled at 48%. And it's just exceptional value. Like the value is around the same price as a lot of kind of just basic beginner whiskeys. And also the taste is great. So let's jump into the tasting notes. It's got these really nice tropical notes, not as extreme as like the Aaron 10 or, you know, like the Rampour, which is basically just, that's just like eating a passion fruit. But it also has this other side, which is almost like an Irish whiskey. There's some nice shortbread, there's some vanilla notes, and there's some nice raisin notes. So Puna Rakao often overlooked by the whiskey geek, but with them releasing this, it really has brought a lot of whiskey geeks back to reassess the Glenlivet distillery. And I feel like there's so many other distilleries that can learn from Glenlivet. You know, McCallan, Dalmore. You know, they don't need to stop their main whiskeys, just keep them going. But make it one-off whiskey for whiskey geeks and see how it goes. And see how much you might bring some of us whiskey geeks back. So the next shortlisted whiskey of the year is a whiskey I have to agree with G Whiskey on. And it is the Craig Allerkey 13. 
this is a really fantastic, fascinating whiskey. This was a whiskey when I first got onto whiskey, I hated. But as I've gone down my whiskey journey, as I've gone and tasted all these whiskeys and then come back round, it's suddenly become one of my favorite whiskeys. Even when you buy a bottle, like it's almost like a Campbelltown whiskey, there's kind of a rugged profile, real funky notes. But as you go through the bottle, you just start to like it more and more and more and it draws you in more and more and more to the point that I didn't buy this that long ago and I was getting really close to actually finishing this and I had to basically say, okay, no more. I need to do my whiskey of the year video. I need to make sure I can still include this whiskey. Yeah, it's really good. It's definitely a whiskey geek whiskey. It's not a whiskey I'd give to beginners again. So this whiskey is unchill filtered, but I believe it's is colored. I'm not 100% sure it doesn't say on the bottle. I've seen some blogs and stuff that they do say it is colored, which is unfortunate. But at the end of the day, it's about the taste and the smell. So this is like an old time kind of style of whiskey. It feels like you're being taken to the past. And I guess that's kind of what the branding kind of leads you to believe as well. It's just a really nice, characterful, sharp, rugged whiskey. Like this is, the gloves are off. This is not like a soft whiskey. Some pickled lemon, cola, spicy notes, some peppery notes. There's caramel notes and there's some licorice notes. And one of the really good things about this whiskey, especially a whiskey of this age at 13 years, is it's really good value and it seems to, be holding its value. So I'm definitely keen to get another bottle with this. It really deserves to be on this list. So before I get into my whiskey of the year, I do have some special mentions. And one of them is this one here, the Ben Romick Peat Smoke Sherry Cask Matured. And this was the whiskey I rated my top winter whiskey, if you watched my winter whiskey video, because it's basically a fire hose of flavor. It has this really rugged spirit style, aged in sherry casks. It's also smoky at 55 ppm, so it's just everything, just full blast. It was great for winter. It's bottled at 46%, which is kind of unusual for Ben Romick. So the next special mention whiskey is actually a New Zealand whiskey, which is why it's a special mention, because I know most of you can't get it, so I don't really want to include it on the main list. The one I picked was this one here, the Waiheke Whiskey Cantankerous. And this is part of their special circumstances release. So it's one of their better kind of real interesting whiskeys. This one's bottled at 48%. It's aged in a mix of ex bourbon casks and Australian muscat casks. I've just loved everything Waiheke Whiskey has been doing. And I feel like this year has been an exceptional year for New Zealand whiskeys. I get hundreds and hundreds of comments from you guys saying, oh, you're a Kiwi, what's the best New Zealand whiskey to buy? Or maybe you are a Kiwi and you're like, what's your favorite New Zealand whiskey? And often I've like recommended some whiskeys, but never really sort of thought that there were New Zealand whiskies out there as good as my absolute favorite scotches. This year it's changed. In 2022, New Zealand distilleries are really starting to bloom and I feel like it's what happened with New Zealand wine in the 80s where it really was starting to put its profile on the map. So speaking of New Zealand whiskey, there were a couple of other New Zealand whiskies as well that stood out. The Cadrona Growing Wings. These ones are expensive, but you can't argue that the actual spirit is delicious, especially these later releases. And then another New Zealand whiskey that stood out was this one here, the Thompson Manuka Smoke Full Noise. This one's bottled at 54.2%. Growing up in New Zealand, I had a lot of like smoked fish and often with smoked fish, the way they smoke it is with Manuka chips, which is a native New Zealand tree. You know, with peat, right? They burn peat to smoke the barley to get smoky whiskey. So rather than peat, this one uses Manuka chips. So it just gives you a really unique New Zealand profile, something that's unlike any other whiskey. And every so often when I'm in the mood for something smoky, this is just something that's just completely different from your tr traditional peated whiskey. So now what you've been waiting for, the whiskey of the year for 2022. And this was a tricky decision because I think a lot of these whiskeys I've talked about so far could have been my whiskey of the year. But there was one whiskey that did stand out that after I bought it was really like bringing me back to it and absolutely delicious. And that is the Belle Blair 15. This was a fantastic whiskey this year. I absolutely loved it. It's another whiskey I had to stop myself from finishing before this video. It goes along the same lines, what I've been really enjoying this year. It's mixing ex sherry casks with ex bourbon casks where you get the best of both worlds. And Belle Blair 15 does this really well. It's 46%, it's unchill filtered, natural color, and that's on the label, which is great. I love to see that. It's a 15 year old and I just love it. So let's just jump into the tasting notes. It's these really nice fruity notes, citrusy sort of lemon peel kind of notes as well, tropical notes, some spice kind of ginger notes coming through, some chocolate, and then it has this sort of really nice kind of textured full finish, which is 
great. I love it. So I'd love to hear what your favorite whiskey was for 2022. So leave a comment down below. And thanks everyone for watching this year. It's been fantastic. Thanks to my Patreons for the support. And above all, share and enjoy. Beautiful.